Hello everyone and welcome to today's Continually Optimised Merchandising Decisions webinar from Blue Yonder. Thank you all for joining today. You're all in listening only mode, but we welcome questions throughout today. So please feel free to put all your questions in either the Q&A or the chat. And at the end of the session today, we will get through to you. Uh, my name is Wayne Snyder, so thank you very much for joining us. I'm the Vice President of Retail Strategy here at Blue Yonder. And I'm joined by Andy Kyle, who many of you will know, who's our, our Retail Principal Solution Advisor, uh, we're focusing specifically on our category management applications. So thank you all very much for joining us today and, and, and welcome. OK, let me just briefly run through the, the agenda and how we want to spend the next half an hour today with you. So we're going to just kick off for a few minutes just talking about some of the many challenges that you'll be aware of that retailers are experiencing at the moment and how category management can be used to respond to them. Then Andy will talk more specifically about our new category management insights tool to show you how you can respond quicker to trends. You can take better actions and improve your sales. And then finally, as I say, we'll kick into a Q&A, so feel free to ask questions as we're going along. It's great to see so many people engaging on the chat um, all together, so please keep that going throughout today. OK, so let's start today just looking at, say, some of those challenges we're all aware of. So as we know, there's a number of issues that a lot of retailers have had to cope with the last two or three years. Um, and many of them are actually affecting category management. As we all know, category management really is at the heart of any organization. It's really, the, really ultimately, it's the end consumer experience. What is that product? How will the store be laid out? And obviously, issues that we've all experienced in retail are critical to those within category management and how we solve them. So the first one we're all aware of, those changing consumer behavior those new categories that have sprung up, the focus on availability that's happened in the last two years, even more so than, than other priorities for the consumer. How are we responding to those shifts? The contraction of assortments we've seen and now the expansion of, consort, uh, of the assortments, impacts of things like social environmental issues. And obviously this has a major impact on category management, how we leverage loyalty data, how we plan that right assortment, how we can align it to individual customer, understanding the needs at a store level, to be able to drive that customer centric assortment. The next that we live every day is obviously from a workforce perspective, the challenges on labor. So how do we achieve that efficient workforce? How do we manage our costs and improve productivity? Support the new priorities of the workplace and also deliver a better customer engagement. Because obviously as we know from a category management perspective, ultimately this is needed to deliver those efficient displays, to have planogram compliance, to be able to understand how often you can change your planograms. The more efficient the labor is, the more responsive we can be to changing assortment to those changing trends and needs. Online growth has been a major impact across all sectors, most noticeably, of course, in the grocery sector. We've seen stores being de developed as be delivery or collection hubs, a decentralized fulfillment network, the ability to sell store inventory online, the mixing of matching across dark stores and fulfillment centers. And all of these have been given lots of challenges, which means that you need to have an efficient in-store picking, when you're planning your assortment, your space, it's no longer just about your store customer. It's about understanding the omnichannel channel customer. Some customers are coming in just to pick up deliveries. A number of items are going to be picked by, by store colleagues. So actually how the store is laid out, the, the width of aisles and all these different things need to be taken into account when you're planning your stores. These are just three of the issues. If we go to the next slide here. Uh, there are a number of issues as well around the supply chain. We all read in the papers every day about the impacts on supply chain and what it means in terms of last mile and delivery, automation and efficiencies we're seeing, growth of robotics, the challenge we're all seeing around convenience versus speed versus cost. The, the plethora now of these fast delivery models have placed a lot of emphasis around the supply chain and how that's delivered to the customer. And that means again, how that means the impact in terms of how the stores are laid out, making the stores more efficient, making sure deliveries are store ready, that things are laid out, as I talked about before, to make it much more an efficient supply chain. We also need to look at the store said before, the reconfiguring the store space, how stores are, where they're located, what that means in terms of the focus on health and safety, the need for that high availability, which means it's never been more important to align space with those changing customer behavior, making sure your assortment and replenishment in space, in sync and optimized for the store pick. And then finally, um, sustainability, waste reduction, be able to understand sustainable sourcing and sustainable deliveries, legislation, reviewing the products therefore becomes imperative that when you're planning your assortment, that it's an omnichannel assortment, you review your pricing and markdown strategies, 
And it links into replenishment because it's no good planning the best assortment if you can't actually execute on it. So all those multitudes of challenges we're all experiencing every day, as you know, hit you hard in the, in the category management space, which means it's even more imperative to be able to be data driven, to understand these insights in much more real time and to respond more effectively, which is precisely why we've developed this new tool that we're going to demonstrate now. Our category management insights tool can help you understand these things and how best to respond. So these are just a few of the many challenges that we're all living through every day. And I'm going to pass over to Andy to try to, to show you how our new tools and insights can help you respond most effectively to these challenges. Great. Thank you very much, Wayne. Really appreciate that overview of some of the trends uh, that are, are impacting retail on a day-to-day on a -day basis. Uh, as Wayne mentioned, my name is Andy Kyle. It's a pleasure to be with, uh, here with you today. Um, I'm a, a retail solution principal here at Blue Yonder, and I know many people that are registered for this uh, webinar. And also, uh, it's a pleasure to speak to some new faces and some new people here as well. Um, so for, as Wayne mentioned, meeting those challenges that are, are every day around how do we develop the customer offer, Blue Yonder, as you well know, does have an integrated yet modular solution suite that helps you do everything from ingesting shopper insights, clustering your stores using machine learning and AI, building those space aware and customer centric assortment plans, right through to planograms, whether pl uh, planning your space and your planograms at cluster level, or doing that at store specific, uh, specific level. And very much tied to those store layouts. And as, as Wayne mentioned, uh, through COVID and post COVID, a lot of retailers are looking at how they reconfigure their store space, uh, reacting to the trends that have been heightened by the COVID pandemic. And flowing that all the way through to the store execution process, executing those plans in store. So for many years, we've been a market leader in having a set of modular solutions that enable you to plan all of those aspects of a merchandising, a space assortment display process as part of an overall category management framework. And of course, within all of these modules, we do have some very rich reporting. So whether you're a planner who's building a planogram, and you need to understand space allocations on that planogram, how your brands are performing, how your products are performing from a space productivity, or you're doing that from a macro space process or from an assortment process. We've always had reporting within these tools. But we've also recognized this need that although many retailers, of course, today still plan their assortments and their space allocations around the, the, the major category review and the minor category reviews and the updates, and that was, that's a very good process that will remain. We also see that there's a, a trend within the business to be more responsive, as Wayne mentioned, and the purpose of this, this webinar is about how can we be more responsive and maybe be more surgical? How can we use data to analyze where is our business performing well? Where is it reaching targets? Where is it performing less well? Even down to individual category, individual product, and individual stores. So we strongly believe that whilst these planning tools will continue and the range, the assortment category review process will continue, increasingly retailers are looking for that continuous feedback on the performance of their space, their categories and their products. And that'll enable them to be more surgical to maybe just change those planograms or change that category space allocation or that, that assortment in those stores or in those clusters where you may not be achieving your financial goals. And to that end, we have developed a brand new capability that sits and connects with the Blue Yonder integrated category and space management solution. And we call this new capability category management dynamic insights, because it is very much that it's all about using the data within your enterprise, along with your planning data that you're capturing your assortment, your planograms, your floor plans within the Blue Yonder category management suite combining those together, together to be able to present planners with insights to help you improve your business and achieve your sale goals. So category uh, management dynamic insights, what is it? It is effectively a pre-packaged set of retail category management insight modules. So this goes beyond reporting. So we still have reporting, operational reporting within our tools across the database, but it goes above and beyond that. And on the right, we, we will cover some of these key modules in this presentation. We have uh, insights around space planning. We have insights around floor planning for our customers who are using the, the macro space tool from Blue Yonder. 
and we have insights around assortment optimization. But as well as those insights connected to those processes, we also have some additional insights around shopper, around products, and around stores. So these are some of the key modules that are available as part of Category Management Dynamic Insight, as well as some data analytic uh, modules that we call Data Doctor and Anomaly Detection. And these tools are very useful when, when we're consuming very granular and large data sets in to, drive this, uh, to drive this capability. As you well know, there's always a challenge in retail of having data accuracy. So these uh, data doctor and anomaly detection, uh, detection can spot those things like gaps in your sales data, missing attributes, and can present those back to planners to enable you to fix the data, improve the data, which will have a virtuous circle of uh, being able to ensure that the insights are more accurate over time. So it's a pre-packaged set of, of these modules. These insights are accessed through the Blue Yonder Luminate portal. As you, as you may know, the Blue Yonder uh, portfolio of products across category management, supply chain planning and execution, uh, we are moving you know, our solutions to what we call the Luminate portal on our Luminate platform. And these solutions will be accessed through that, uh, that, that portal. And it all use, also uses some of our Blue Yonder platform, what we call data services. And that allows us to in, integrate, ingest, and combine your sales data. So things such as sales, volume, profit, promotions, your demand forecasting data, and your shopper data, and combine that data with the Blue Yonder applications, your space management and assortment data. So we're combining these data streams, and then we're using AI and ML to present actionable insights to those planners to help you make smarter, more surgical decisions. So category management dynamic insights fundamentally covers four key things. It looks at some of the key KPIs within your business across the different areas of space, assortment, macro space. Based upon targets that are entered into the system, we can present you with alerts. So is there particular categories? Is there particular stores, products, regions, or groups of stores where you're not achieving your financial targets, your space productivity targets, or your margin targets. It also comes out with using the AI and ML. We have um, some, some algorithms that look across the data to also present you with what we call narratives, automated narratives. So these are insights where we are telling you where things are performing well, where your sales productivity is up, but it can also alert you to uh, and give narratives of where things are, you know, potential for improving, where you could direct your planners to therefore go and have a look at where you're not achieving goals. And potentially then, of course, even update a planogram. So the whole, the whole point of this is really to start to um, not only have the, category, the major category review calendar, but also to be able to surgically change planograms, to change assortments where they're not achieving your uh, targets. And we also have some root cause analysis. So trying to understand from your data why your space productivity might be up what or might, uh, where it might be down. Is this due because we, we're increasing the pro promotions? Is there some issues because um, we have a mismatch between demand and, demand and capacity? So it is looking at some of the data, this vast amount of data we're ingesting to come out with some root cause analysis. So let, let me step you through some of the, these key screens and I'll start with space planning. So those insights around our planogram solution. On this home screen, when a user logs into the system, they get to see some of the key KPIs within their business. So at the top, we see things such as space productivity. So how are we performing in terms of sales per linear fleet feet or linear meters? We can look at the um, how our new product in, uh, innovation and assortment expansion. So where we we are increasing distribution, how are we uh, indexing versus the previous year? We can look at capacity versus demand because we ingest the demand forecast data. We can look at on the shelf is your capacity holding a products matching your demand forecast and inventory turns. So some of those key KPIs, and of course now we can drill down into those as well. 
We also hear on this main screen presents you what we call those automated alerts as well. So again, it will uh, give you uh, uh, alerts to what, uh, what areas, which products, which categories, which stores, which regions need attention. They will be things where we are not achieving our financial goals or targets. There may be other things that need review. So things are pretty okay, but you might want to go and review and areas that are business as usual, we're hitting our targets, everything good. Also on this screen, it will give you a high level view of reset status. So in terms of when you share the planograms through the, the blue yonder portal, uh, which stores, how many stores have clicked? Yes, they've implemented and complied to the planogram and how many haven't. And also the, the overall planogram status. So how many planograms have you got different of different statuses within the business? Now, on the, within these KPIs, I can now drill down to a lower level of detail and start to look at things like trend analysis. So here we can look at some other key KPIs, such as space productivity by sales, by units, and by margin. And on the left-hand side, you probably see that all of these insights, I can look at this from a total business standpoint, or I can start to drill down. So I can drill down your product hierarchy, your merchandising hierarchy. So whether that be category, subcategory, brand, or whatever your hierarchy is, we can present that in the uh, analytics screens. And we can also allow you to drill down the location hierarchy. So that could be your total business, regions, districts, clusters, all the way down to stores. So again, planners can look at this from a holistic point of view, and they can go and drill into certain areas of your business to look at these space productivity trends because we're looking at a planogram type analysis here. Bottom left hand side, we can also look at um, over this over time. So the, the planner or the user can have a look at specific weeks for their analysis. Do they want to look at you know, a, a 13 week period, a 20 week period or the last four week period? So it allows them to uh, filter this analysis um, on, on the bottom left hand side. Now, on the left hand side, when we have a category uh, selected, the data updates in the main screen. So you here we can see a trend analysis of the sales per linear sales and sales per linear over time, over a number of months from the time period selected. And this is for the beef category. And it's comparing that space productivity versus all other um, categories within the business so you can see that start to see that trend line how are we doing and of course you could drill down to a region or a cluster of stores where am i trending up where am i trending down so you can start to now um, filter down the product and location hierarchy you can look at that trend analysis and this is where you can start to understand where you where your business is doing well and potentially where you could potentially go and change a planogram because it's not achieving your your goals and here, when you click on the, uh, the light bulb icon here, this allows me to bring up those insights. So that automated narratives that I talked about. So this is giving in more business uh, language or uh, human language, looking at metrics. So margin per linear or sales per linear or volume per linear. And it's looking at where in different subcategories, brands, regions, et cetera, where is, is that margin per linear up? Where is it down? And, and, and some key subcategories that are contributing to your business. So again, we're using some AI and ML techniques to go across that vast amount of data to present these automated narratives that I could potentially act on uh, as a planner. And this is where we see the alerts. So again, I can drill into the screen to have a look at my alerts. And again, this is where I can see my needs attention or needs reviews. And this will show me in different subcategories, brand, brands, clusters, and this is showing me where, in this particular case, where shelf capacity is only 70% or lower of target inventory. So this is where I may be running the risk of an out of stock. So again, we can configure with you, what are your targets on things like shelf capacity versus inventory, space productivity, et cetera. We can enter the targets into the system, and then we allow the system to um, alert you to, or alert planners to where things are not going uh, as they should. Some other screens now are talking about root, root cause analysis. So here we're looking at space productivity. And by the way, this of course would show in your local language, in your, and, and your local um, currency uh, as well. So here we're looking at sales per linear and we're looking at a particular category here, ice cream. And at the bottom, we can see where, you know, we, we're in this 
uh, space productivity, we're actually doing extremely well. We're, we're nearly 18% up year over year versus uh, last year. And so what it's doing, it's looking at the data and saying what's called what we call the factor contribution. So we're looking at forecast accuracy, shipment plan. We're looking at uh, shelf capacities versus demand. Whatever those factors are that, that could be driving that improved um, sales productivity or on the converse, if it's if we have some issues, it could be because we have out of stocks. It could be because our demand forecast is, 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 is not aligned to our shelf capacities and we're running risk of out of stock. So this is where we're doing trying to uh, look at some root cause analysis and then on the right hand side, looking at effect to products and stores. Where are we seeing you know, the top stores or the bottom stores, that, which products are contributing to the uplift or contributing um, to, the, to the negative performance? So this is where we have this root cause analysis. And then finally, within space planning, uh, one of the big uh, uh, pieces that, that everyone wants to have a look at, once you've done your major review or your, your, your line review, uh, you have obviously introduced new products and you have changed distribution of products. You've done a, what we call an, an, an assortment expansion. You've you put that, uh, that, those products into, into greater distribution within your retail network and stores. So in here, this is on the left-hand side, you can see we've got some, again, some uh, more human language wording around how my new products and assortment expansion performings so you can go and, and again you can filter this by category by region by store even uh, and then go and have a look at this how it's performing versus other other products within the category so again we're looking at the top one new product introductions and at the bottom uh, assortment expansion so this allows us enable week by week to uh, understand how our new product is performing so this could potentially, if we if it's not performant, we could then go and potentially move remove that new product from certain stores or clusters because uh, it's having a negative effect on the overall category. So let's just have a look at some of the floor planning insights. Uh, so what I showed previously was uh, all of our insights around space planning, which uh, you know the planogram tool that certainly all of the Blue Yonder customer has. Uh, I, I know we have some potential customers on the call, so um, that's, our, that's our core solution for building planograms. Let me show you some insights for, for people who are using our floor planning, our macro space tool uh, as well. And again, uh, as before, this is combining sales data we're loading in from your retail enterprise, your sales data, your promotion data, your forecast data, and combining with the, the space allocation of categories and departments on the floor plans and we're bringing and summing all that data up so again on the left hand side we have the filters that work i can drill down my department display category cluster region etc uh, all the way down to store and again we're showing some key kpis at the top we're looking at the linear space uh, in terms of sales in terms of unit in terms of margin and here again on this level one analysis we're looking at that trend analysis across time across those weeks how how is my uh, you know how is my in this uh, this field here we're looking at the central district how is that how is that performant on uh, versus all other all other districts so we're looking at sales sales per linear versus all others in uh, you know all, all of the regions and again we can look at that from a sales per linear units per linear margin per linear and we, and we can go and have a look look at those trends see which performing well what is trending up? What is trending down? What's on what's on the level? Um, the other important thing in a macro space process is to start to look at outliers. So uh, when we've when we've uh, when we've updated our floor plans, maybe for a seasonal space change, it's really important to understand what are my top ten, what are my bottom ten stores. So you can see at the bottom here, we can list out um, what are, and again, we could filter by you know department. Um, however you want to filter that data, but what is my, my top 10 stores by average sales? What are my bottom 10 stores? And I may want to go and have a look at those. And I can have a look at average sales by department. So I can look at that from a sales, from a unit sales, from a margin, or a planner can set their own, what we call combined performance index. So looking at their own mix of sales units and margin, and that, that, uh, that, that the charts at the top will also uh, update based upon that CPI metric. So again, here, we're just trying to understand department performance and where we have the top performing uh, stores and the bottom performing stores. And you may want to go and then have a deeper dive within the floor plans of those bottom stores 
start to look at the the the, um, the out of the box reporting within the floor planning solution to then go and make some changes and maybe just do some surgical changes in those stores where we're not uh, we're not achieving the sales targets. And also on this drill down, this allows us to then go and have a look at all of the different planogram sizes and the top categories within that particular department. Uh, so again, with all of these insights, the idea is to give you a high level view and then to drill down to a lower level of detail uh, and analysis. Uh, what's also important from a, a floor plan status as well is obviously any retailer, they are building new stores, they are uh, remodeling stores, and they have store requests for space changes. Um, so again, here, what we're presenting based upon those different types of changes on the floor plan, um, we are giving you a view of those reset activities over time. So change by store and change by department. And again, you can click on any of these or expand any of these uh, areas and you can then go and drill down and look at those stores. Where am I having a category reset? Where am I having that new store opening? What is the, the open date, the close date, if it's a store refit? Uh, etc. So we're, we're capturing this data from the floor plan uh, solution, but giving you this high level view of the amount of change and what change is happening uh, across your floor plans across the weeks. Uh, and then also within the floor planning insights, because we have uh, in this uh, analytics application, we have, of course, all of your floor plans with all of the category space um, allocations, and we have your category sales data we can start to look at space uh, space elasticity curves. So again, on the left-hand side, we could go and look at this at a particular display category in a particular, you know, across all stores or within a particular format or region or cluster uh, of stores. But here we can start to look from a sales or from a margin or from a unit. What is that elasticity curve across? And this is number of bays across the bottom, four bay, eight bay, 12 bay, 16 bay. So we can start to look at the average sales or the, the units or the margin. So again, this can help us look at where, where do we top out on our space allocation? Okay, so that might be adding extra footage or metrage or number of bays to the, to the category is not gonna add any additional value in terms of return. So you might be better off using your space elsewhere. So again, always a very important thing to understand is around the space elasticity curves. And then just finally, before we go into the q and I just want to talk about some of our other product and shopper insights. So hopefully you've got a good view of what we do from a, 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 a space planning insights and the floor planning insights. But we also have these other apps around, uh, um, other apps around product and shopper insights. And by the way, I'm showing you some highlights. I, I'm not showing you every single screen from the analytics apps I'm, uh, for, this, uh, for this webinar, just giving you some of the highlights of some of the, the screens we have. There is some additional screens available within the solution in terms of product insights it's um even if we're not looking at particularly space allocations uh, or, or or macro space allocations it is always of course very interesting to understand the financial performance of my products so in product insights because we're loading in the transaction data um, again we can look at this across across time but again, you can drill down at the top across department, category, subcategory, and then across the location hierarchy. And we can look at things like sales, sales units, gross profit, space productivity, some of those key KPIs and look at uh, sales this year, last year, year over year. So really just looking at from an overall product performance. And um, because we also load in or can load in demand forecast data, we can look at forecast um, how we how products are forecasting versus the mean average. So how how accurate was the forecast? And then looking at subcategory Pareto. So this is really interesting to have a look within my category. What are the best subcategories? And again, overall or within a particular um, de department or a particular cluster of stores, um, what are my best performing subcategories? Uh, and looking at that Pareto analysis. And again, this can give me some great insight into you know do I need to change the assortment or where am I picking up some trends? on what perform, products are performing well. Uh, in terms of shopper insights, uh, uh, and again, this is probably more focused on grocery where we have that repeat purchase, but um, the, the shopper insights uh, screens allow us to look at things like basket analysis. So here, we because we're loading in your transaction data and we can load in shopper data uh, within the analytics tool, we can look at things like average basket value. And again, you'll see at the top, 
consistently, we have the drill down filters. So again, I can look at this by category, by subcategory, district zone, et cetera, and across different time periods. And again, but here I can look at my basket value, my average basket size in terms of number of, uh, um, number of items in the basket, how many customers, and what percentage is being sold on discount or promotion. And again, in the middle there, we can look at which, which of the top uh, zones contributing um, to that discount or where they're buying more on promotion, as well as average basket sizes. And then here we can look at within the baskets, again, what are the top subcategories contributing to basket value? Uh, so these could be, you know, products that are higher, um, higher, higher prices, but which are the, the real subcategories that are really driving that basket value um, metric? So again, we can drill down on each of these. Uh, this is an interesting one. This is looking at trip missions. Because we have the transaction data, we're looking at the sales contribution by time of day, across day of the week, and we can look at that against another um, uh, another metric, such as uh, number of transactions. So sales um, amount in either pounds, euros, um, or, or dollars, whatever your currency is. Um, but we're looking at this time of day. So this is a 24 hour opening uh, store, of course, here. Um, so this is just looking at what is the percentage of sales or percentage of traction uh, um, of transactions. So interesting analysis, where am I, where, when are my shoppers coming in? and what day and what time to my peak uh, peak times and again what are the top 10 subcategories uh, based on the metric uh, and then also we can look at that trend across weeks so not only can we look at that basket value but we can see how is the basket value trending across week in a particular region cluster or, or district and we can look at this by shopper segment because again uh, one thing we can do within here is identify different shopper segments that from the baskets are buying different types of products. So here we can see how is the, uh, the basket value trending? How is the basket size trending uh, across the week? And again, I can drill down in, into particular areas of my business. And if I look at a particular week, I can see how is the basket size uh, across days of the week within that specific week. So again, hopefully some really useful um, shopper metrics um, here again, we can select a particular um, subcategory and see which sub other subcategories are frequently being brought together. So when I uh, click on a, a particular category, uh, what, what, uh, what percentage of customers are also shopping in other categories? And what are the most popular subcategories in the basket? So at the bottom there, you can see which are based upon the size of the text there, uh, we're seeing you know, what are the most popular subcategories that people are buying across, a, uh, across the category. And finally, um, we've also looked at, as I mentioned, shopper segmentation. So here, um, based upon the transaction data and the shopper data, uh, within these analytics screens, we can look at what are your key shopper segments. And we're not trying to identify in individuals here, but we're just trying to understand that there is, you know, in this case, there's four different shopper segments that are identifiable by the basket trends. Um, and we can look at their typical basket size of so which segment and which shopper segment is is you know your most important from a basket size basket value um, percentage of sales so uh, and frequency of transactions that they're buying so again just trying to understand our shoppers a bit more uh, and we do have on our roadmap by the way um really to start to to take this one step further to to help um particularly our grocery pharmacy drug retailers um develop things like shopper category decision trees that's some things on our roadmap uh, we should be sure to look at out of that we do have our big um, online and in person event icon that's happening uh, later in the in the spring um, here so please look out because we we will we'll hope to have some insights and information about where extent how we're extending shopper insights to help provide some of those key inputs uh, into into the assortment planning process.